Now, this u can take in fact, a any value, but we will consider some special cases. So, if I take normal operation for normal operation u is between 0 and 60 degrees. Now, what is so special about 60 degrees? See, 60 degrees actually the duration of one interval. See, we have defined what is known as interval. Each cycle of the AC side is divided into 6 equal intervals. So, one interval is 60 degrees. So, a pair of thyristor valves conduct for each of these intervals. So, u is less than 60 for normal operation. We will also consider abnormal operation where u can go beyond 60. Okay. So, let us first concentrate on the normal operation where u is between 0 and 60 degrees. So, if I take one cycle of the AC side voltage, one cycle of AC side voltage, any voltage, there are three voltage sources, uh, three single phase voltage sources, any voltage, it is equal to six equal intervals. So, each of these uh, are of duration 60 degrees. <coughs> now, what I do is I divide this uh, interval into two sub intervals. So, each interval of duration 60 degrees is said to be equal to two sub intervals. So, there are two sub intervals, uh, there is a first sub interval and a second sub interval in each interval. Now, by definition, uh, the first sub interval is the one where there are three valves that are conducting and the second sub interval is the one where are two valves conducting. See, my assumption is normal operation and hence u is less than 60 degrees. Okay. So, I up to some angle there are three valves that are conducting that correspond to overlap angle or uh, commutation angle and once that is over the current has completely shifted. So, if you look at the previous figure there is a certain duration for which 1 and 3 both are conducting after a certain time 1 stops conducting in the same interval only 3 is conducting. Okay. So, I am dividing the interval into two sub intervals the first sub interval is the one where three valves conduct, three valves conduct and in the second sub interval two valves conduct. So, since uh, you, you take any instant either three valves are conducting or two valves are conducting that is why this case is known as 2 and 3 valve conduction mode, 2 and 3 valve conduction mode. So, there are other possible modes corresponding to other possible range or other possible values of u. So, for u between 0 and 60 degrees, we have 2 and 3 valve conduction mode. So, uh, if I want to uh, analyze, uh, I will I will take uh, one interval and we will see that it is sufficient to analyze one interval. We can in fact, get the entire waveform of any quantity either on the DC side or the AC side. So, let me take one particular interval and analyze it in detail. So, consider the interval. Can you suggest what interval we can take? See, one interval is 60 degrees. What interval can be taken? <coughs> Any suggestion? Suppose I take the interval, uh, the starting point of which corresponds to turning on of uh, valve 3. At what instant valve 3 is turned on? Alpha. Suppose I take the interval between alpha and alpha plus 60 degrees. This is one interval. So, again this in this interval has two sub intervals, there is a first sub interval and a second sub interval. So, 
So, what is the first sub interval? What, val what are the values of omega O t? What is the range of omega O t? In the first sub interval? Alpha to alpha plus u. If I take the second sub interval, it is omega o t taking values between alpha plus u and alpha plus 60 degrees. Okay. Now, I want to uh, analyze uh, uh, the circuit for the two sub intervals. Let me take the first sub interval. So, what I will try to do is I take the first sub interval that is alpha to alpha plus u and try to draw the circuit which is only relevant for the first sub interval. See the circuit is in, is in fact drawn here already. Okay. Now, when I say first sub interval there are three valves that are conducting 1, 2 and 3. Now, there is a valve 5, there is a valve 4, there is a valve 6 which do not conduct. So, there is no current flow through valves 4, 5 and 6. In the second sub interval when only in the second sub interval which valves conduct? Three and two and three. So, when only 2 and 3 conduct, E A does not carry current, only E B and E C. So, what I will do is, I will just draw a simplified diagram, where I only show those components which carry current. So, when something is not carrying a current, I can just remove it. Okay. It is a, a open, uh, open circuit. Okay. So, I will just uh, draw a circuit diagram, showing only those components of the circuit, which carry a current. Of course, all the three voltage sources carry current. So, I will show all the three. So, that means, all the three inductances carry current. So, when all these inductances are connected in series with the voltage source. So, this is E A, E B, E C. Now, I draw the remaining part of the circuits in a slightly different way. If you look at the original circuit, thyristor valve 1 for this first sub interval alpha to alpha plus u is as good as being connected in series with E A and L. Similarly, thyristor valve 3, you please refer to the original circuit. So, in the if you look at the original circuit, 1 is connected in series with E A, 3 is connected in series with E B and there is one more thyristor that is connecting 2 that is connected in series with E C. But only thing is uh, now uh, the direction uh, as far as uh, 2 is concerned the direction is in the opposite direction. So, the current flow is in entering the current is entering the uh, voltage source. Okay. So, this is 2. Now, from the circuit we know that uh, the cathode of 1 and 3 are at the same potential, they are shorted, cathode of 1 and 3 are shorted. So, I will short this and the cathode of 1 and 3 is nothing but the positive terminal of the DC side voltage and the anode of 2 is the negative side of the D side voltage. So, on the D C side I have a current source I D. So, this is positive terminal of V D, this is negative terminal of V D. Okay. Now, let me take the current through valve 1, say I 1, I 1 is the current through valve 1. So, I will always show the current uh, 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 through a valve as the one which is flowing from anode to cathode. Similarly, I will also show I 3. What about I 2? I 2 is I D, please note I 2, the current flowing through I valve 2 is I D. Okay. So, that I need not give a separate notation for that. Okay. Now, 
for the analyzing this i will apply kirchhoff's voltage law to this to this loop consisting of voltage source ea voltage source eb the two inductances l val1 and val3 just apply kirchhoff's voltage law ring one okay so if i do that l d i1 by dt minus l uh okay i will do one thing i'll try to go in a different direction i'll say l d i3 by dt minus l d i1 by dt so by kirchhoff's voltage law this is equal to eb minus ea is that okay so what is eb minus ea see we have the expression for eb and ea eb and ea expression is given here okay yeah it is root 2v sin omega ot so i'll make one further assumption uh, i mean one further use of one further relation so d i3 by dt into l minus l of course i1 is uh, i1 and i3 are not uh, independent say if id is the current on the dc side i1 and i3 are related to id so i can write i1 as id minus i3 i1 is id minus i3 by kirchhoff's current law this note so this is d by dt of id minus i3 equal to eb minus ea is root 2v sin omega ot so i can uh, uh, I uh, try to solve this uh, this is a differential equation uh, in i3 so solve this differential equation for i3 that's all okay so this can be simplified id is a constant please note our uh, representation of the dc side is a constant current source so id is a constant so derivative is zero so what we get here is d i3 by dt is equal to v by root 2 l sin omega ot is that okay so left hand side there is a 2 l d i 3 by dt so the 2 l i have taken to the right hand side uh, the root 2 gets cancelled with this root 2 on the right hand side so this is the expression so can i get can i get an expression for i 3 so i 3 as a function of function of omega ot so it is v by root 2 omega o l you want to integrate with respect to say the if you look at the left hand side the derivative with respect to time say for most of the waveforms our independent variable is omega ot but the derivative here that is involved is with respect to time okay so that's why there is omega o l coming there then what One minus cos. How did you get that one? Initial condition. Ah, plus cos alpha. Yeah. So it is cos alpha minus cos omega ot. See what you can do is take the. There is a constant of integration. I mean, how do you get that constant of integration? How do you get that? You use one condition that is i three at. so at omega ot equal to alpha i3 is zero so using this condition you get the expression for i3 okay now let me uh, take this expression for i3 and see what happens to i3 at alpha plus u say alpha is the alpha is at one end of the first sub interval alpha plus u is at the other end so what is the value of so the, see please note this expression is applicable for any value of omega ot between alpha and alpha plus u that's all not any value i mean it is not applicable for less than alpha or greater than alpha plus u so at i3 of alpha is zero what is i3 of alpha plus u okay 
I can use that expression, but what is the value of I3 at alpha plus C? That is the definition of uh, first sub interval. So, it is equal to ID. That means, the current should have got completely transferred from valve 1 to valve 3. So, valve 3 current I3 at alpha plus U at the end of first sub interval is equal to ID. So, if you use the expression, what do you get? So, this gives ID equal to. So, the expression is V by root 2 omega OL into cos alpha minus cos alpha plus e. Okay. Now, we normally write this in terms of uh, uh, current uh, which is obtained as the uh, peak value of short circuit current. Say, if you just go back to this circuit, the original circuit. See, th there are uh, AC side terminals of the converter. Suppose there is a short circuit between any two AC side terminals, what will be the short circuit current through the source or inductance? Say, suppose I call this say point A, point B, C. There is a short circuit between A and B, or B and C, or C and A. What will be the current flow through uh, the voltage source or inductance when if there is a short circuit. It is as good as saying I apply a line voltage, so, there are two phase voltages, I apply a line voltage to an equivalent inductance of 2 L. Okay. So, I can get easily get the RMS value of the short circuit current by taking the RMS value of voltage divided by reactance. So, the reactance will be 2 times omega O L. So, what I do is I define what is known as the peak value of short circuit current. We use a notation I subscript S, S for short circuit. So, suppose I S is the peak value of short circuit current. Then I S is related to the RMS value V, the frequency angular frequency omega O inductance L. Of course, I forgot to close this bracket. So, how is I s related to V omega O and L? See, if you look at the RMS value of the short circuit current, it is equal to the RMS value of the voltage, which is uh, sorry, RMS value of the line voltage is just V, RMS value is V line voltage divided by the total impedance or reactance which is 2 omega O L. So, that is RMS value if I multiply this by root 2 I get the peak value. So, that is nothing but V by root 2 omega O L. So, I can write I D in terms of I S that is what I am saying. So, I can write this previous expression as I S into cos alpha minus cos alpha plus e. So, this just for the sake of simplifying the notation instead of every time writing V by root 2 omega O L I just say I s and I s has some meaning. Okay. Now, let us see <coughs> uh, what happens to the instantaneous value of the voltage on the DC side. So, if I take the first uh, uh, sub interval what is V d? So, if you go to the, the equivalent circuit, see what we have here is the equivalent circuit, where only the elements which do not, which carry current are shown. So, what is V d? I can get an expression for V d from this circuit and the expression for I 3 which I have just derived. Okay. So, can I uh, uh, get an expression for V d by applying Kirchhoff's voltage law to this lower loop? See, if 2 and 3 are conducting, obviously that happens in the first sub interval, they are short circuit, ideal the intervals, they are short circuit. What about the voltage across L in which is in series with E C? What is the voltage across the inductance which is in series with E C or VAL 2? It is 0 because a constant current is flowing. 
d i d by d, see rate of change of current is 0 because co current is constant through this inductance L which is in series with E c. So, V d can be related to E b E c and the drop across this L which is in series with E b. Okay. So, by applying Kirchhoff's voltage law, I can write V d as E b minus L d i 3 by d t minus what? See, I am referring to this circuit. I am applying Kirchhoff's voltage law to this lower loop. So, it is minus E c. So, what is this L d i 3 by d t? We have an expression for L d i 3 by d t. Just go back to the previous uh, page. L d i 3 by d t is nothing but can I relate it that to E b and E a? Yeah. Yeah. See, L d i 3 by d t is nothing but E b minus E a by 2 by 2 from the first equation because L d i 1 by d t with a negative sign is nothing but plus L d i 3 by d t. Okay. So, it is E b minus E a by 2. So, I have E b minus L d i 3 by d t is E b minus E a divided by 2 minus E c. Yeah. So, E b minus E b by 2 is uh, E b by 2. So, I have E a plus E b by 2 minus E c. Now, E a, E b and E c are balanced. So, that means E a plus E b plus E c is 0. So, E a plus E b is minus E c. So, this is equal to minus 3 by 2 E c. Okay. So, this is the expression for V d in the first sub interval. Now, if you take the second sub interval, second sub interval is very straightforward because it is much easier. In the second sub interval, I have only 2 valves conducting uh, 2 and 3. So, if I want to draw equivalent circuit showing only those elements which conduct current, then it is the same circuit which I got earlier, but now a few elements can be removed because I 1 will be the current through valve 1 will be in second sub interval I 1 is 0. So, I can just remove this E a L and valve 1. So, the remaining uh, elements which are shown are E b E c L. So, there is a valve 3 which is shown and a valve 2 which is shown. and the voltage across this current source ID is V d. Now, of course, the showing L in this case is a redundant because the current through the inductance is constant, both inductance is constant, its current is constant. So, there is no drop across uh, the inductances. Okay. So, what is V d in the second sub interval? E b minus E c because there is no drop across the inductance. Okay. So, if I want the average value of V d, can I get the average value of V d from the expression for V d in the first sub interval and second sub interval? See, first sub interval and second sub interval constitute one interval of 60 degrees. Now, <coughs> is one interval sufficient for computing the average value of V d? See, on the DC side, what is the minimum period? 60 degrees. On the DC side, the minimum period is 60 degrees. Okay. So, we, we whatever happens for 60 degrees, the same thing repeats after every for every I mean, subsequent 60 degrees. So, uh, the 60 degree uh, period consisting of first and second sub interval is sufficient enough to compute the average value of V d. So, I can say the average value of V d. So, we will use this notation upper case V with the subscript D. <coughs> so, this 
So, this can be obtained from the expression for the uh, instantaneous value in the first uh, interval of duration 60 degrees. So, it is 3 by pi which is nothing but uh, the reciprocal of pi by 3 60 degrees is pi by 3 radian into integral of V d with respect to omega O t from alpha to alpha plus u plus integral of V d with respect to omega O t from alpha plus u to alpha plus 60 degrees. Okay. So, you have to substitute two different expressions for V d in the two in integrals. In the first integral V d is minus 3 by 2 E c in the second int integral it is E b minus E c and we have expressions for E i E b E c. So, if I substitute those expressions I get the, so I will leave it to you to derive that this V d can be shown to be equal to V d o by 2 into cos alpha plus cos alpha plus u. So, please derive this after substituting the expression for V d and then afterwards substituting the expressions for E i E b E c. Okay. Of course, V d o is the notation which we have been fa very familiar with. What is V d o? Is it the maximum uh, sorry maximum yeah maximum average value of the uh, D c voltage for which case that we already for the case of u equal to 0 or l equal to 0. Is it true even for this case? For any no non-zero value of u, is it still applicable? Yeah, it is just a number. We we have the I mean we have the notation VDO. What was the definition of VDO? VDO is the maximum value of the average DC voltage with L equal to zero. But can we still say that it's the maximum average value with uh, uh, non-zero L. Anyway, there is no need to even I mean uh, generalize the definition of VDO. Once we have defined VDO, we will just use it as VDO being the maximum average value with L equal to 0. Yes. Okay. So, uh, that same notation we are using here. Okay. So, we will just relate VD to VDO. Okay. Right. Now, what was the expression uh, for VD? with uh, L equal to 0, see L equal to 0 is equivalent to u equal to 0. So, if L is 0 or u is 0, V d is V d o? V d o cos alpha, we, we derived that V d o cos alpha. So, you can get that, you su just sub put u equal to 0, if u is equal to 0, we get V d as V d o cos alpha. Now, due to <coughs> u or L, is there a reduction in V d? or is there an increase in V d? There is a there is a reduction. Okay. So, we what we can do is we can actually uh, quantify that reduction. So, we, what we will do is we will just use this relation to see how much reduction is there. Okay. So, yeah. so, since I am just going to the next page I will use this. Uh, so, I use this expression V d equal to V d o by 2 cos alpha plus cos alpha plus u. So, I will write this as V d equal to. So, without uh, inductance that is when L is 0 or u is 0, the expression is V d o cos alpha. So, now I can write uh, with uh, inductance or with non-zero u, V d is V d o cos alpha minus V d o by 2 cos alpha minus cos alpha plus u. Is that okay? This is same as the previous expression. Sorry? Sorry? No, I am just re rewriting the previous expression instead of writing V d o by 2 cos alpha, I am saying V d o cos alpha minus V d o by 2 cos alpha, that is all. I am just rewriting the previous expression, nothing more than that. Now, why I do this way is, 
the first term is the expression for V d uh, for the special case of u equal to 0. Okay. So, this can be written as V d o cos alpha minus V d o by 2 into cos alpha minus cos alpha minus u. Now, just go to the previous page. Look at the expression for I d. I d is given by I s into cos alpha minus cos alpha plus u. So, cos alpha minus cos alpha plus u is I d by I s. See from this equation cos alpha minus cos alpha plus u is I d by I s. So, I will write cos alpha minus cos alpha plus u as I d by I s. That is what I have here cos alpha minus cos alpha plus u is I d by I s. So, we write this as V d o cos alpha minus R c into I d, where R c is defined as V d o by 2 I s. So, one can put the expression for V d o. See, V d o is 3 root 2 V by uh, pi, V d o is 3 root 2 V by pi and 2 i s, what is 2 i s? Uh, so, 1 by 2 i s is 1 by 2 into for the reciprocal of i s. So, by definition i s is the peak value of the short circuit current. So, it is root 2 v in the denominator in the numerator it is 2 omega o l. So, if you do all the cancellations what you get is 3 omega o l by pi. Okay. So, the point to note is the if you just look at the previous line what we have got is v d is equal to v d o cos alpha minus R c i d. So, the second term is due to L because R c is equal to 3 omega o L. If L is 0, we do not get the second term. Okay. So, that is why this R c has a name. R c is called uh, commutation resistance. In fact, e equivalent commutation resistance. Now, it is just an equivalent resistance, but it does not result in any loss. See, this resistance is not causing any loss. Say, uh, there is no resistance in the original circuit. So, it is just a name. Okay. So, R c is just a notation. It is not a physical resistor which is present there which is causing any loss. Okay. So, one has to just look at that uh, as an equivalent commutation resistance. Okay. 